Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, Australia possesses a valuable creative sector. For example, in my electorate of Forest, uh, I have a number of creative industries and organisations. For example, one of those is the View Group that's based in Bunbury. And I was just at the Astra event talking to uh, those who might be interested in what the View Group are actually doing. The View Group is a creative studio based in Bunbury in my electorate of Forest in the southwest of Western Australia. And it recently uh, was a finalist in the 2014 WA Industry and Export Awards in the categories of small business export, creative industries export and regional um, exporter. The development of this high-tech industry in Bunbury uh, over time will employ more than 200 people locally for their biggest uh, projects. It is set to become WA's biggest film company, looking to access the demand for animation and CGI films in China. And this is exactly the sort of business, Mr Deputy Speaker, who is impacted and could be impacted by the issues that we are discussing within this bill. That of um, online copyright infringement. Um, the creative sector, of course, uh, is certainly uh, the one in the, in the firing line of this one. Uh, as with the VIEW group, we know that in Australia uh, we certainly have a very serious problem, one of the worst in the developed world. Um, and when I look at the VIEW group and I think you know, the wonderful work they do, I've been and had a look at what they do. Um, in a small place in our part of the world, they already have contracts worth $160 million to co-produce several animated features with um, the Chinese staff at Shanghai Hippo Animation. And there are plans to expand this and, um, um, and you know, is pursuing a range of other opportunities. Another creative industry in my part of the world is, is a, a group called Sonic Lolly, founded in 2010. It's a uh, music and sound creation, production, publishing and a strategy type company. And it, it operates out of world class uh, recording facilities in, of all places, Margaret River in Western Australia. So um, they really um, have a, a, a regional and international target market as well as in the local, regional and national industries. And of course there is, as we know, a great demand for quality recording, for production, um, for music business strategy, um, artist development, all of the things that are, that are happening with, through Sonic Lolly and other businesses uh, in a similar way. And I know when I looked at a, um, a, a, the South West Development Commission looked at this whole issue of the creative industries in the South West and there was a report done by SGS Economics and Planning and um, when, we looked at, in, when they looked at the 2011 uh, census. There were 1,095 employees working in the creative economy in the southwest at that time, and when you consider that um, there were, it's, the turnover was around $306 million, with a gross regional product of $148 million, and exports of $70 million. Now, that, um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, just in my part of the world, gives you some idea of the types of creative industries that are engaged in Australia and that are most affected um, when we have copyright infringement. There were some additional messages in that report um, that um, you could tell that this is going to be an emerging industry. Uh, the southwest region really hosts more than a tenth of the statewide specialists employed in film, in tele TV and radio, and 7 per cent of the statewide employment in publishing. So this is an area that certainly is impacted by this issue of, of uh, copyright. And we have so many, so many high-performing creative industries, film, TV, radio, publishing, architecture, design and visual arts and music and performing arts. And the growth was at 3.6 per cent. And each creative sector worker in the southwest um, basically adds more, um, more value, $136,000 um, a year than his or her counterpart in other locations, including Perth and even other world-renowned international creative locations. So aren't they doing a great job, Mr Deputy Speaker? Um, and of course, um, this region is, needs to be able, and this particular sector uh, is something that is a focus um, of the regional economy in the future. And that's why this type 
of legislation is particularly important, Mr Deputy Speaker. Yes, it may not be all that needs doing in this space over time, but this bill uh, introduces a real key reform that will reduce online copyright infringement um, because of the specific concern raised by copyright owners, by copyright owners, and I'm not surprised why when you when you look at the reasons um, and the figures behind that, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Copyright protection provides an essential mechanism for ensuring the viability and success of creative industry. Those that I spoke about at the beginning of my speech, just a snapshot of what's currently happening but will happen in the future, not in just my part of Australia but right around Australia. Uh, but I'm particularly proud of, of what those businesses do and the emerging sector that is the creative sector. And uh, this is, um, this will, um, in, we need to keep incentivising and rewarding such creators like those people in the southwest of Western Australia. And where online copyright infringement happens on a large scale, Copyright owners need an efficient mechanism to disrupt the business models of online locations operated outside of Australia that distribute infringing copyright material to Australian consumers. There are significant difficulties in taking direct enforcement action against those types of entities that are operating outside of Australia. And online uh, copyright infringement poses a significant threat to incentives and rewards to the businesses, the creative sector in Australia that I spoke about, really due to the ease in which copyright material can be copied, can be shared, and it is, it's viral almost, and uh, through digital means without any authorisation. And when you consider that Australia's copyright industries employ 900,000 people, an economic value of more than $90 billion and $7 billion in exports around this country, um, and of course, digitisation means that they are particularly susceptible to online um, copyright infringement, and this has the this really impacts directly on the Australian economy. That's why we have taken this so seriously. But it can hurt consumers as well. Um, consumers accessing um, material, whether it's uh, in this way unlawfully, they're not certainly not covered by consumer protection laws and maybe exposing themselves to the risk of fraud and other forms of cybercrime, without a question, Mr Deputy Speaker. And as you know, I do a lot of work in this space. And I, see, um, I'm, I do presentations into the community, into school groups, parents, businesses and, uh, and broader community groups. I see the harm that they come to in this space all of the time. And one of the focuses, the absolute focus of what I do is around children and the education of children on, in what they do online. And in this space, um, I noted that both the, um, uh, the Attorney General and the Minister for Communications noted that children um, in this space of online piracy um, and online copyright may be exposed to material that is not age appropriate. And I can certainly say that that is exactly what's happening, um, on, on, whether it's in my community or others around Australia. Children are, through this medium, uh, being exposed to material that is certainly not appropriate for their age, facilitated by this issue. And of course, um, no, we can't expect that any single measure um, is likely to eliminate uh, online copyright infringement. But we have to take one step at a time, and this is an important step in, uh, in developing um, this particular legislation. And uh, I think the ease, as I said, there's no easy solution, um, and there are a range of measures that are required to reduce piracy, um, because we want to continue for people to be able to continue to enjoy content in that digital environment. Uh, but rights holders need to know um, that their, co their content can be accessed easily and at a reasonable price, and that internet service providers take reasonable steps to ensure that their systems are not used to infringe copyright. And we really need consumers um, who are prepared to do the right thing and access that content lawfully so that our creative industries can get the benefit of what they actually produce, of their imagination, of their investment, of their creativity. Um, often their heart and soul that they put into this place, uh, into the work that they do. 
and of course that we need a legal framework that um, facilitates that industry cooperation so that we have flexible but effective effective measures to, to help combat online piracy. Overseas, we've seen other countries trying to address this. This is not a simple issue. The US has a Centre for Copyright Information. It's an industry body. It's a voluntary um, industry agreement called the Copyright Alert System. The UK has a similar approach through the Creative Content UK and in New Zealand a statutory graduated response scheme. It just shows that there, it's such a complex issue. And I know um, there's 3.4 billion people plus in the world using the internet. 1.3 billion people at least using Facebook. There are tens of thousands of websites, many with absolutely no, in no encryption, no protection of any sort. And that's the space that uh, people are in. The 3.4 billion people using the internet often have no idea exactly what they're exposing themselves or their systems to when they engage in this space. And uh, some of the reasons um, you know, that we really do need to be concerned about online copyright infringement, we have consumers you know, accessing material um, unlawfully, as I said, then they are not covered by consumer protection laws. I'm sure this is something that hasn't really occurred to them at all in this space. And I think um, when I look at the issue of, of, of online safety um, and the amount of time that people are spending online, they have an increased exposure to, these, to this problem and certainly through the issues of, of uh, online piracy. You talk to a child and you say, how much time do you spend online? And that's all, it's without, frequently with, with absolutely no barriers to what they can access or where. And it's uh, from 20 minutes to a couple of hours and on weekends it's unlimited. So they have access to everything online and of course the issue that really affects me in this space is the fact that children actually have access to information and to sites that, are, that is not age appropriate. Now, the Senate Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee reported and recommend three uh, amendments. The proposed amendments, one to the bill and two the ex to the explanatory memorandum, will, be, will implement the recommendations of the committee and ensure that the bill better achieves its objectives by providing a, uh, a framework. This is the important part, Mr Deputy Speaker, the framework that has to be and needs to be and is workable. It needs to be effective and flexible and very easy to understand. Um, there is only one proposed amendment to the bill um, and to consider whether to grant an injunction. The federal court may take into account the list of specified matters rather than being required to take these matters into account, which enables the federal court to exercise discretion as to what matters to take into account as well as the appropriate weight to place on these matters. Again, uh, it needs to be a practical approach, consistent with that normally taken by a court in assessing whether to grant an injunction. An injunction. There are two proposed amendments to the explanatory memorandum. and. Um, the first relating to appropriate orders that the Federal Court may make in granting the injunction consistent with the Federal Court Act of 1976 um, and a supplementary explanatory memorandum providing a further example uh, that the Court could order that parties set up uh, a landing page where subscribers will be diverted to if they try to access a disabled online location. Um, and such a, 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 a direction would have merit. Uh, since subscribers will know what is going on without needing to contact their CSP to ask questions. Um, and of course, the second amendment to the explanatory memorandum is to provide further clarification on costs and liabilities of CSPs in carrying out an order. And, um, and this is uh, the position under case law, and the bill is certainly not intended to change that. But I'll go back to where I started, Mr. Deputy Speaker. There are so many creative industries in Australia with a great future, and we need to make sure that they get the benefit of the work they do, of their creative capacity, their business model, and this is one part of that. So I commend the bill to the House. I thank the member for 